Jamin here. Make sure you subscribe below so you don't miss anything. Today we're gonna do a flashback. I'm gonna I'm gonna look at some footage from the year 2006. That's a long time ago for some of you, 16 years ago. And I did a little research to kind of think about what was going on in 2006. I mean, when you think about it, there was a lot going on in popular culture. There was a huge technology shift in a lot of uh, ways that really kind of accelerated where we're at today. I mean, think about this. George Clooney was named people's sexiest man alive. And I totally understand why he he barely made that because I was I was sick pretty much the entire year. So, yeah, he was lucky I was disqualified. Facebook social media site expanded to open registration for anyone over the age of 13. Remember, they used to just be for like university students. And, you know, then once they opened it up for everyone, then, you know, grandpas and grandmas are on there. And you and I were on there just pretty much sharing everything about our lives. <laughs> uh, Hannah Montana debuted on the Disney Channel introducing Miley Cyrus to the world or kind of like a slim shady and then you had Justin Timberlake you know he had one of the hit uh, CDs one of his solo CDs that year I think it was Future Sex Love Sounds do remember that and he was kind of interesting too when you think about that time he was coming out of the 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 boy band movement where you know it wasn't cool anymore to kind of be in the boy band and of course he graduated he was pretty much the only one out of that boy band <laughs> that made it and he graduated into hanging out with the cool hip-hop and r&b kids remember that yeah that that kind of happened during that time too and of course google purchased youtube for 1.65 billion dollars that doesn't even sound like a lot today compared to a lot of the billionaires we have you know talking about how much they're, they're making but that was a huge acquisition that I don't think Google uh, really saw how fortunate they were. Think about it. Back then, when people shared information, it was like, you know, MP4s. We didn't even really know what that meant. Uh, we had Napster. We had all of these different ways of sharing data, but it wasn't like synchronized, like social media. You had MySpace back then. It was just starting to open up. But when you think about the swing community, like Ultimate Lady Hop Showdown in 2006, and you have all of these peripheral things happen in culture, technology was rapidly connecting people. And so we went from these little groups of, you know, unique swing communities where people had their own little style to kind of a homogenous global community overnight. And so ideas began to become more rapidly shared with other people and dancers who were around for a while kind of lost their ability to stand out as individuals and of course like you know hannah montana going to miley cyrus and justin timberlake going to bad boy justin dancers had to kind of find a way to make themselves more distinct and more legit in the eyes of their peers and so during this time you'll see a lot of the dancing reflect kind of the hardcore original videos a lot of fancy hells will pop and aerials a lot of the same styling the authentic styling right because you know obviously when everybody can do a swing out you have to say mine's more authentic it looks like this person from this clip you know and so you can kind of see that in this footage based upon what i could remember but what i'm going to be looking for today is i'm interested in seeing which dancers basically kept their style a lot of them were kind of mimicking each other and they were doing the thing that was popular to make yourself stand out at that time but a lot of them had an individual style that was very underdeveloped at the time and then at some point they became more prominent and their style became the thing that they were identified with and so i want to see which dancers basically still had a vestige of that style that eventually matured into what we see today this is going to be pretty fun. I haven't seen this one in a while, and I want to give you guys my big, fat, bloated opinion. So let's go. So, Ultimate Lindy Hop Showdown. I haven't seen this in over 10 years. So let's uh, see if I can remember everybody in it. Okay, all right. Uh, shaky Cam. I see. Oh, look at that. Nick, May uh, Nick Williams. Uh, let's see, is that Max? That's Todd, that's Frida. Yes, some of those some of those people are no longer with us. Some of those folks are here still after all these years. Let's see what goes down. Yeah, 
Yeah, there we go. Those acrobatic aerials. A lot of hells are popping. Yes, let's see. Okay. Okay, who's next? <laughs> okay, Nick Williams and Rhea. Okay, a lot of old Al Mintz, more aerials again. Yes, classic aerials. Let's see. Oh, let's see. This is Max and Alice. So the common denominator, as you can tell, is lots of energy and big aerials. All right, I wanna see if we got some, some little bit of style, some distinction. Joe Demures and Nelly Hatley. Yeah, he's a really, really good uh, blues dancer too, if I could recall. going down let's see the audience is loving it there we go more classic moves oh let's see Dan and Tiffany all right let's see what's going down okay more aerials Yes, classic moves. Everybody's doing that move. There we go. Swimming out. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. It's fun. Okay, so this looks like it's round two. Okay, there we go. They're doing it too. They're doing it too. I just forgot that some of these moves were just kind of new in the consciousness at the time, but they were really new old moves. Okay, so so far the most consistent with their style from this this past footage and today, I would have to say is Nick Williams so far. I was really surprised by that. He still has the same type of posture and the same type of intensity changes I'm seeing in this footage as he would in the present time. More aerials. More splits. More aerials. See that classic Charleston pattern? A lot of people were really just highlighting how important that was. Let's see. More aerials with Todd and Frida. Yes. More Charleston.
Nice. Nice aerials. All right, let's see what happens next. I can't quite remember. Let's see. Some of those classic Frankie Manning aerials. And the swing out. Here we go. Boy, it would have been so much fun to be in that audience. That is wild. Now, another person I would say that hasn't really changed much, but has evolved and sharpened her movements, and that's Frida. I mean, obviously in this footage, she's doing a lot more aerials, and today they're not her and her main partner, which is Sky Humphreys. They don't do a whole lot of aerials anymore. I'm not saying that they don't do them at all, but that's not their, their primary thing that they're known for. But I see a lot of amazing footwork, and there you go. Let's see. Judges said Nick Williams was the winner. Hey, I liked I liked Nick Williams too. I thought it was fun. My winner was Todd and Frida. Wow, that was really fun. Getting a chance to analyze some of my favorite dancers of all time. And it was really cool seeing their maturation process. I, again, I would say Nick Williams and Frida Segadol were just really consistent after all of these years. I really feel like if you take away all of those aerials and extra stylings of that particular time, I can still see them even today back then. And I think that's a really awesome lesson to learn, especially at today's like intermediate level. I would say even back then they were considered advanced. But when you look at the dancers today and what we know today and how, how many more ways we can move with the technique, it would be the equivalent of an intermediate advanced um, or an advanced level today. And I would say there's a huge lesson here. How do you stay yourself as you grow through a process of being in a time that has a very specific style without becoming ostracized and not fitting in? I don't know. I don't have the answer for that. I think it's a delicate balance um, being st having street credibility but still being kind of pop at the same time. And I don't think anybody wants to be left on the outskirts of popularity or acceptance. But in doing so, there's something incredibly refreshing and renewing about someone who's a true artist. So that's how I see it, guys. I, if you are out there and you are at an intermediate advanced level and you're just kind of struggling to figure out who you are as a dancer, keep going. Start videotaping yourself even more so and just analyze what you like, what you don't like. And ask people to give you their feedback on your own dancing. And I tell you, it's a little intimidating to do that. But a lot of times you'll end up finding out that a lot of people will like your dancing for reasons that are not the same reasons you like it. And somewhere in there, throughout all the clutter, you're going to find the nugget, the true nugget of who you are. So... I hope this video was inspiring to you guys. If you haven't started swing dancing, you should. I've got free courses, so check those out in the description below. And uh, if I want to hear your comments. Who, do, who did you think was your favorite in this footage? And let me know why in the comment section below. If I don't see your comments below, hopefully I get a chance to see some of you in my class online. Take care.